We turn to nightmare number two. Nightmare number one was last week's nightmare. Nightmare number two is last month's nightmare, so you've probably forgotten about it, but it's called the food crisis. Yeah. World food prices have increased enormously. It's an inconvenience to you, but it's a nightmare to one group of people, and that is the urban poor of, of Africa and a few other developing countries. Why urban? Because the urban population has to buy its food. The rural population grows it, and so is, to an extent, protected. But the urban population buys its food. Urban poor? The poor not only have a lot less money, but they have a much higher share of their budget going on food. At the low income levels of urban poverty, half of the budget is spent on food. So the urban poor of Africa, and who's at the bottom of the food chain? It's not just the urban poor, it's the children of the urban poor. Now one thing we know from studies of nutrition is that if children are malnourished for more than a couple of years, the effects are permanent. They're called stunting. Unfortunately, we now know that stunting is not merely a physical condition. It's also a mental condition. It the lack of nutrition does irreversible mental damage. That's the situation that urban Africa is now in as a result of the enormous increase in global food prices. The current projections for global food prices is that they will stay high for years. If those projections are right, we're building a generation of impaired urban Africans, both physically and mentally, who will be with the world for 70 or 80 years. We have to bring food prices down, global food prices. This is not just a matter of growing more food in Africa, though that's part of it. The urban population of Africa is fed from world food supplies, and so it has to be a world solution. My idea here is that we have a mutual de-escalation of folly between America and Europe. And a mutual de-escalation of folly, folly in food production, would, I believe, bring food prices down a lot. You in America have got a folly. We in Europe have got a folly. Actually, we each scorn each other's folly, but cling desperately onto our own. So first, let me describe your folly, and then I'll describe ours. Your folly is biofuels. The best that can be said for the American production of biofuels is that you, you're rich enough to be able to afford folly. Right? Even in energy terms, the American production of biofuels makes no sense. Right? It takes 10 units of energy to generate 11 units of energy with biofuels. But of course, the guys who produce the 11 at the cost of the 10 run away with a subsidy on all 11, not on the one. Why are you doing it? You know why you're doing it, because your brilliant agricultural lobby, which is one of the most effective subsidy hunters on earth, has scared you. How's it scared you? It's fed you lies about dependency upon imported oil, the lie being that biofuels will reduce that. Right? You've been fed lies. What's the European folly? The European folly is the ban on genetically modified crops. Because of that ban, which came in in 1996, two things have happened. One is European agricultural output has gradually fallen behind American output at about the rate of 1.5 to 2% a year. That has reduced world food supply, but a more serious effect 
is that African governments have also banned GM because Europe banned GM. Partly they think if Europe bans it, it can't be safe, but also they know that if they let GM in, they will never be able to export to Europe, and some of them hope at some stage to do so. And so every African country other than South Africa has banned GM. Africa needs all the modification of crops it can get. Its climate is deteriorating now. Climate change for Africa is not something that's happening in the future, it's happening now. The staple crop of Southern Africa, maize, may become unviable in Southern Africa unless we can rapidly introduce more drought-resistant varieties. There are huge opportunities for big increases in food supply. For example, still with maize, a third of the world's maize crop gets destroyed in storage by fungus. It's possible through genetic modification to pretty well kill that fungal process. Why did Europe adopt the ban on GM? Because it too was fed lies. What was the lie in Europe? It was that genetic modification is unsafe for your health. Right? That played upon a health scare in Europe over BSE. Huh? You're not dead, are you? Right? You've been eating it for quite a long time, this GM stuff. Um, so just to summarize there, both American citizens and Europeans have been fed lies. Because we have been fed lies, African children won't be fed enough to avoid irreversible nutritional damage. We must face these agricultural lobbies down to avoid a here and now nightmare.